Hi everyone, so in this section we're going to go through a little bit of how to actually collect Twitter data using R uh, for processing by natural language processing. This is something you might want to do for your group project. Um, so a couple of notes, right? First of all, some of the libraries we're using, TwitR and Base64 and code, those uh, may not be uh, in, installed for you, probably are most likely not installed for you. And unlike some of the other ones that uh, our studio will automatically recognize and help you try and install, these ones aren't like that. So you do need to go up to that tools, install packages, and you type in the name, right, of the package, and then um, you can hit install. It will ask you if you want to update them or restart. I'm going to just cancel out of this now. Um, that will only ask you that question if you already have it installed. In my case, I did. Um, if you don't have it installed, it'll just go ahead and install it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and update the, bring these libraries in, right? And one of the, the first things that library does is give us the, uh, the ability to set up our, our Twitter authentication, right? Um, and actually, you know, this is going to um, reveal my secrets to you. So the codes that I use, and if you want to look, I'll show you exactly why it's going to do that. Um, so I'm going to, uh, run the command and uh, you'll have to trust me that it works um, uh, because I don't want it to show up uh, but I will show you the result of what happens after you run it uh, but as you can see right here the, the arguments is taking of the consumer key the consumer secret the access token the access secret right um, and so those are exactly the, the things you need to connect to Twitter uh, as me to this particular app that I've created right um, so I am going to run it. I'll pause for a second and then we'll come back and we'll talk about it. So now I've run it. I've established my connection. Um, you may get a thing that asks, do you want to, uh, store your, uh, dot OAuth, uh, authentication, uh, for later use in the same R session. If you do, that's fine. You can say yes. Um, and as long as you're, just, you're not on a machine, someone else is going to use, there's, there's really not much security concerns there. Right. Um, but then once you have the connection, you can do cool things like search Twitter for any phrase you want. So I typed in the phrase rally, just because I'm in rally, and I asked that they give me a thousand tweets back, right? And it'll go and it'll run, and it'll take a little while because it's actually connecting to Twitter right now and it's collecting uh, those tweets, right? Um, and once it does, it actually sticks them in a big list that's not very useful. So one of the first things you'll probably want to do is run this twa list to df to data frame uh, example. Right, and that will actually convert it to a data frame so that you can then look at it better. And so now I have it tweets.df. And if you look at it, right, I have a whole bunch of different things going on here. It seems like there's a lot of conversation about the rally police in the last 1,000, uh, the tweets about the topic, right? Um, so let's say, you know, there are a lot of tweets about the rally police. Let's see, we want to. We want to know a little bit more about them. Oh, by the way, this command right here, head tweets.df, that's just going to show you the first couple of entries. Head is a really nice function that will just show you the beginning of, uh, of a data set, right? Um, so you can scan through it. Um, and uh, so I could go and look at the user, right? And the user object. And so I could get user rally police, which is the Twitter ID for the rally police. And I could see things like, when was this created? Well, it was created in 2010. They have a hundred friends. That means they follow a hundred people and they have 12,626 followers, right? Um, there's a lot more information. If you type user, right, you can, you'll start to see, right, all the information. If I type a string, right, I'll see all the different things I could pull down about that user, right? Um, and if you go in, you can also look it up in the, the code. So if you look in the user object in Twitter, it'll tell you a lot more about it, right? Speaking of which, I forgot to mention, there's a lot of stuff in the tweets data frame that we have too. So there's the text, right? There's also whether or not the tweet was favorited, whether or not it, what the count of the favorites, when that tweet was created, uh, was it a reply to something else? This is a unique identifier that identifies the tweet, right, in the Twitter system. So you can always regather it. This tells you how the tweet was posted, right? Was it on a, uh, you know, mobile Twitter, which is um, or iPad or whatever. Uh, the screen name of the user, whether or not it's a retweet, how many times it's been retweeted, uh, and geo uh, lat longitude if the person had mobile location turned on. Now, uh, it's going to say a lot of NAs there. That's because most people don't have mobile location turned on, right? Um, so that's kind of um, some of the things you can do with the user in the data frame object. Now let's try a particular task. We want to identify the location of a user in our data set 
whose tweet has the most retweets, right? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do this most RT uh, tweets the data frame is the one which has the maximum of the retweet count. Remember, so we're going to use, we're going to get tweets dot data frame slash string retweet count, right? So that's the list of all the retweets. What's the max of that? And then which index has the max value? And we want that row. We want all of its variables. Uh, in the tweets data frame, right? So that's gonna be the first thing we're gonna do. And we find the tweet that has the most retweets. Um, and in this case, it's um, it turns out to be a, a Japanese one. I believe that's the right language. I'm not sure why it's saying that. Um, for some reason, it's interesting it's showing up in the rally uh, search. I wonder if that has something to do with uh, one of the translations of one of the things or, or something along those lines, right? Um, see if we can figure this out in more de detail at all. Um, let's see. So that's the tweet that text. Let's see if we can look at it. So um, most.rt string tweet uh, probably need to get, oh, text. There it is, just text. Huh, not sure. Maybe it's part of this bricked off URL here that is why it's, um, it's coming up in a search on rally. Um, Twitter also might be doing things like searching for the location as well or something like that, right? Um, we can then look at the username of the person who has uh, the most retweets. So that person was Raleigh Carlton. Oh, so there we go. There's your answer. The user's name was has Raleigh in it, not the actual tweet text, right? Um, and then we can look at, we can grab that user who has the most retweets and we can find out where that user is located according to their own description. And that is definitely a Japanese town or city. I, I actually know a little Japanese, but th some of those characters are uh, not clear to me, so I don't know where that one is. Um, uh, we can then go and start to look at additional things. So we could figure out, for instance, oh, sorry, skipped ahead. Oh, did it again. I, hit the, I keep hitting Alt instead of Shift, right? We can look at the retweet count of all the tweets, right? Um, and then we could instead find the uh, row. Oh, this is just a this is just an example of another way to do it. We can find the max, the row of the max retweets, right? We can then print out that row. It's row eight hundred twenty nine, and then we can print out that again. That's just to show you that there's, you know, in R, there's always many different ways to kind of do the same thing again, and again. So this way, we're kind of pulling that uh, one where we figured out the identity the location of the max retweet one uh, in more detail. So besides searching Twitter for a particular word and then looking at the data about that word, another thing we can do is look at topics that are trending in a particular location. Um, so there are pre-specified trend locations in Twitter. And one of the cool tools that Twitter gives you is the ability to just type in a lat long coordinate and then find where the closest location to that is. So I've, actually typed in um, some geo, some uh, lat longs that are close uh, to the pool of college of management. Um, and hopefully it'll say that the closest location is rally. And in fact, it does, right? Um, so, um, and then I can get the trends for the that location given this WOEID, which is a unique identifier that specifies that location, right? Um, so I can grab those trends and I can see what the top trend is. and. Right now it's bail out humans is the top trending. Um, not sure exactly what that's about, but we could grab some of the tweets about it. And I'm gonna do that by searching trend Twitter for that trend as a query and grabbing a hundred tweets and then putting those into a data frame, right? Um, so now I can look to see what the head tweets and I can start to look to see what the bail out humans hashtag is about, right? Uh, oh, I don't qualify for unemployment. You have to bail me out, right? So this is about the, um, I'm recording this in 2020. So this is about the pandemic and um, people being bailed out as opposed to uh, corporations being bailed out, right? If you want to know all the, like say you're curious and you just want to poke around the world and see what things are trending on Twitter in different places, um, you can grab all the available locations right, that are out there and see where they are. And this is probably too much to look at. Let's do like head on it, all right? Um, and so for instance, if I wanted to know what was going on in uh, Ottawa, Canada, right, I can 
just simply type in get trends 2972 oh that's winnipeg and it's still don't want to know what's going on there and it tells me the top 40 trends going on there right survivor uh, the mass signer things like that if you want to get the trends for the whole world that one's easy it's just trend one right i'm going to do head on this just so i can see a little bit more um, and it gives you the top trends um, in, in the whole world right now so that's a quick example of how to search Twitter. And then the next thing we're gonna talk about how to use these tools to do some natural language processing um, and actually understand uh, what's going on in uh, the Twitter text. Thanks.